Hello, hello, and welcome to our very first week of speech. Now, you may be in my speech 1315 class, or you might be in my speech 1321 class. One is public speaking and has five speeches involved. The other is the business and professional communication course. It only has two speeches, but it has a much heavier emphasis on group work, working in settings, working in teams, and all that jazz. Typically speaking, you have one of two options based on most degree plans to either take the public speaking class or the business and professional communication class. However, depending on your particular degree plan, you may be better off in the business and professional communication or your degree plan may want you to have the public speaking route. Either way, you're here and my expectations for the class are virtually the same regardless of which class you're in. So I'm gonna introduce myself just a little bit and then we are going to talk about class expectations for which you have a Google Docs assignment to complete. Let's start with me. So my name is Sarah Spikeston. If you are in any other professor's class, you may have different instructions and they may not have swapped out this video. But if you're in Sarah Spikeston's class, you're in the right spot. If you're not in my class, you should probably contact your instructor and ask them if this video is still relevant to you in your particular section. So, I have been teaching at NCTC since fall of 2018 full-time. I started as an adjunct spring of 2018. Prior to coming to North Central Texas College, I taught at Northeast Texas Community College, so same letters, and TCC, but swapped from NCTC. And I taught there for four years, and before that I was two years at Wiley College as their assistant director of forensics, coaching their speech and debate team to their first ever national championship. So I have some trophies back here, you'll see these. That's my semifinalist trophy from when I was a sophomore in National Forensics Association Lincoln-Douglas debate. And then this one right here would be my national championship trophy. I am a national champion in Lincoln-Douglas debate as well as the top speaker from 2011. I absolutely lived and breathed speech and debate for probably eight years of my life. Two years in high school, four years in college, and then two years after that coaching for a college team. Absolutely love it. I don't expect national championship level work out of y'all. I expect entry level work, putting in a good solid amount of time every single week to improve your skill set. Don't expect you to go out and compete tomorrow. So I competed for Western Kentucky University. I graduated there with my bachelor's in public administration, or sorry, political science, and then got my master's in public administration from the same college. I graduated twice in the same year. I graduated in spring with my BA in political science, and then I graduated that following December with my master's in public administration. I kind of combined my senior year doing both undergraduate and graduate work, so that's why I was able to finish so quickly. And then on top of that, I went over to Minnesota State University Mankato and completed 18 graduate hours in communication studies, which allowed me to teach speech officially at the college level. And then I went out later on, a few years later, and got my credentials, my certificate in professional ethics to go teach philosophy at the college level as well. So technically, I teach three different subjects. I only teach one here at North Central Texas College, but I teach two additional subjects at Northeast Texas Community College as an online adjunct. So I like to teach a lot of things. I like to be a lifelong learner, which is really exciting because one of the things that is so important about the speeches that you give in this class is you guys open my mind up so much in regards to the things that interest you and how those things affect the broader world. So I am so excited and I will say, and I share this throughout the class if you're in my face-to-face -face class, I share it all the time that there are speeches that have touched me, that have happened at the community college level, at the college level, that have affected the way that I interact with the world around me, the people around me for years to come. So. I'm excited. You guys have such a powerful voice and your passion and your dedication to certain subjects are amazing and you will be impacting the lives of those around you. We like to say that it takes seven deep conversations to convince someone to change their behavior, to change a viewpoint, but I like to say that sometimes in class, you're the first person in that chain of seven that will help expand someone's worldview. Sometimes you are the seventh one and they will change. Your speech is the, like, the final straw that helps change things for them in the way that they connect ideas in this world. But you may be the first, second, third, who knows, but you have an opportunity to make a voice here and to really make a difference. One that, word that comes with me is I like to use my advocacy and my 
life in this world to inform individuals, to educate, to uplift, and to build community. I'm involved in a lot of different things. Um, you can see a picture of my daughter over here. This is when she was a baby. She is now, as of, let's see, we are fall 2019. She is a six-year-old in first grade. You can also see some pictures of my husband on our wedding day up here. We've been married since July of 2018 and uh, we currently live in Gainesville but are moving to Sanger, Texas in a couple of weeks. So not very long. We run a rescue farm, so we have co-pilot animal rescue. We also run co-pilot farms, which is our sanctuary for livestock animals. We do everything from dogs, goats, chickens, turkeys, guineas, cows, horses, ponies, pigs, a little bit of everything, whatever comes our way. So we provide um, care for these animals. We provide them with veterinary assistance. We correct hoof issues on our equines, and for most of them, we adopt them out, but if they are not capable of being adopted out or we're concerned about their success level, we just keep them on the sanctuary until they pass away. So that's a little bit about me. Let's talk a little bit about my expectations of you in this class. So if you're taking this class face-to-face, -face, you're gonna have a lot more of a relationship with me. You're gonna ask me, able to ask me questions in class. You're gonna feel more open to that. If you're an online student, I really want you to feel that kind of like simulation of a face-to-face. -face. Please reach out to me through Remind. There are instructions on the homepage of the class how to sign up for it. Do not hesitate to contact me. If you contact me individually, it does not go out to every single student in the class. It comes out just to me, which means that you will have the ability to communicate one-on-one -on -one privately with me as if we were just sitting in my office with the door closed having a conversation. So feel free. I will send out group announcements through Remind, but um, if you need to kind of communicate with me, if you've got an issue, you've got a question about the material, like what does this mean? Well, you, you made this comment on my speech, but I'm not really fully getting it yet. Can you direct me in a different way? be happy to help. You just need to shoot that communication out. If you're an online student, I can't read your facial expressions. I can't tell if you're like, what? What is that? What is the one, two, three pivot turn? I don't get it. If you are a face-to-face -face student, I need you to be off your phone. I need you to be focused. I need you to be looking at me, listening to me, taking notes actively because I can't tell whether or not you got the material. I can't gauge your facial reaction if you're on your phone because you're not listening, you're not responding, I can't tell whether or not you've got something and then I end up having to mark points off <laughs> either way because you're not communicating with me through nonverbal communication. So we want written communication, we want verbal communication if you're face to face and I need that nonverbal communication as well. All right, so let's talk about your time commitment in this class. We have a speech if you're in face to face roughly every three weeks if you're public speaking. If you are business and professional communication, you've got work that's due every couple of days, but you may not have a speech for a couple weeks in. Start working on those now though. Don't wait until the last minute. You will have chapter readings, you will have lectures, and if you're face-to-face, -face, you need a comp book dedicated to just lecture notes in this class because I will be checking in and I will grade them and I will do spot checks if I feel like people aren't getting it, people aren't paying attention, people are too much into their phones, I will do checks. So you do need a comp book dedicated to the lectures in this class. Online students, I may do um, random flyby gradings as well. I may say, all right, everyone needs to upload their lecture notes from the last two weeks by Friday or Sunday or whatever it is, and you will have a limited amount of time to take pictures of your comp book that you have handwritten these things and get them done. It's the same way. We try to replicate face-to-face -face and online in the same fashion. With those chapter readings and lectures, you then need to do your skill building exercises. Your skill building exercises we'll talk about in, in later in the class, what you should be doing. You're going to look at the YouTube playlist and you're going to recreate these things to build muscle memory. If you don't have the muscle memory, you're going to feel really awkward up front. Your body's not going to know what to do and you're going to have these like generally random you know, nervous reactions that you do. So these are something you have to practice at home regularly every single week. It is not something you can cram for at the last minute because your brain is building neural pathways for remembering what to do with your body and your voice and everything else.
And then you'll also have every single week, you should be working on your ORI self-assessments. You'll notice that your ORI is not due till much later in the semester, but ORI now only allows you to do one lesson a day. So start now, download the ORI app, O-R-A-I, and take a look at it start doing the lessons. You can do one a day. You can set even a reminder in the app itself so that it reminds you to, oh yeah, I need to go and spend five minutes doing my next lesson. These things will all help you prepare for your speeches and you can actually practice your speeches using the ORI app so it'll start gauging things like your inflection, your tone of voice, your pace, did I pause right, all of these things even if I'm not physically present in the classroom. So time commitment. All of these things take time. Reading your chapter, listening and rewriting notes for your lectures, skill building exercises, or I self assessments, all these things take time. So how much time should you be spending? The standard in a three credit hour college class, regardless of the field, over 16 weeks is six to nine hours a week of work for that one class. Now you may be really super smart on something and you may kind of like be able to, you know, just totally blow an assignment or to just put in minimal effort in a class. Like if you're super um, like chemistry biology minded, you may be able to like spend almost no time because you just get it. I used to have a friend who fell asleep in chemistry every single day, but he was just a genius when it came to chemistry and he beasted all of us on the exams and fell asleep in class every single day. You know what, that's the way that he's wired. But you need to take an honest assessment of your personal abilities and your public speaking abilities, your communication abilities, to see if this is something that is actually going to work for you. Can you fall asleep in class and still pass the days? I mean, I probably could in the public speaking class, you might not be able to. So you do have to be putting in work. So 16 week class, six to nine hours a week. In an eight week class, you need to double that. You need to be doing 12 to 18 hours a week of studying. In a five week course, you're looking at 18 to 27 hours a week is expected. Yes, in a five week class, like those are really short classes. Things are due constantly, but work is still expected at the same rate. So what do you do in that time? The document that you have in Google will outline how many hours a week you should be reading and highlighting your textbook, organizing your lecture notes, doing skill building exercises, completing chapter quizzes, writing and revising speeches, practicing your speech, standing up and moving, recording, delivering, uploading, all of these things, your ORI coaching, your listening to yourself in a, in a playback, creating Google Docs, all of that is gonna be identified in your class expectations for your first week. That said, you do need to do a couple of things at the bottom of that document that you need to fill in. So based on this chart, you need to identify how much you should be studying a week for this class. If you are 16 week, that's 69 hours a week, eight weeks, 12 to 18 hours a week, five weeks, 18 to 27 hours a week. You need to figure out what is my length of term for this class and how much do I actually need to be studying. The next thing you need to do is download the ORI app, the O-R-A-I app. If you've done it, you need to mark yes. If you haven't, you need to mark no. Then you need to get yourself on a calendar system. Figure out how am I going to be organizing my time in college. It's one of the most cost-effective things that you can do for yourself because it saves you money because you're not missing out on classwork. You're not gonna have to repeat classes. You do these things and you actually schedule these things out. I can guarantee you, you're pretty much gonna pass the class. But if you don't do these things, this is where students start failing to meet their basic expectations for the class in order to even just get a D. So what is your calendar system? Do you have a comp book for this class yet? If you do not have a uh, comp book for this class yet, you need it by the second class day. Meaning, if this is a Monday, Wednesday class, and this is Monday, you need it by Wednesday. If it's Tuesday, Thursday, and today's Tuesday, you need it Thursday. If you are an online student, you need it by the second deadline. So not the course bookkeeping deadline, by the second assignment deadline in the class, which should be the very first lesson. That's when you need it by. You can check with me face to face about the exact date if you're confused. You also need to understand that you do need to bring your comp book to every class every day and that points may be given at random for lecture note checks. You just need to mark yes, you understand that, or no you don't, <laughs> but they do. Even if you're an online student, you still need to be bringing that comp book daily when you log into the computer because that is where you should be taking handwritten notes. And I hate handwritten notes personally. I do everything digitally. That's why I love Google Docs. But when I was a student, I handwrote notes. Multiple studies conclude 
that handwriting notes increases students' retention of material by at least 20%, if not more. Additionally, you are less likely to get distracted writing handwritten notes than if you're typing notes on your phone, typing notes on your laptop. Students who typically take notes on their laptop are one of two students. They're either the amazing students who have got everything on lock. I was one of those students. I could be doing other things, 15 different things on my computer, and still taking notes, but those are rare. The other side are the students who are distracted that aren't very engaged. I need you to be engaged in class. I need you to be focusing on the videos that we're watching, dissecting arguments. I need you focusing on how to communicate, work in groups, etc. And if you're not present, I can't mark you as present in the class. I can't mark you as having done what you need to do in the class in order to improve yourself. So handwritten notes, it's okay. You can go back and type them later if that's your thing. All right, as long as they're written, we should be fine there. So that should fulfill the first page of your document. The next thing is your technology requirements. So the tech requirements for online and face-to-face -face students are not that different because even face-to-face -face students, if they miss a class, they have an excused absence, they're sick on the day of their assigned speech, need to act like online students in order to upload. So you should be able to download and upload media files on YouTube or ARC. You should know how to use and, and pause various media files, specifically YouTube videos and playlists. We do those a lot. You should be able to navigate your Canvas app on your phone or from a browser and be very fluent with how to get to the module section. Everything in this class is run through modules. You should also be able to create change permission settings and correctly share editable Google documents. This is uh, instructions are in your course book keeping on how to share an editable Google Doc. If you do not submit an editable Google Doc, meaning you either shared the wrong one or you shared something else, you will not be able to get points for that assignment and you will not be able to resubmit it. It creates an undue burden on me as an instructor to go back and edit you know, 200 students' documents and let them know, hey, you just submitted the wrong doc, please submit the right doc by this date and then go back and do it again. It duplicates my work, you're a student, you should be able to be responsible for your assignments. You should be responsible for your documents. So let's make sure we get this skill down this week so that we don't have problems the rest of the semester. Everything needs to be editable. We also need to be uh, using your preferred technology. So different instructors may have different rules about this, but for me, everything is through Remind. There are instructions for signing up for Remind on the main homepage. You can choose your preferred method of communication, text, email, or app but all of it funnels through Remind to go to my preferred communication, which is the app on Remind. That makes sure that everyone's communication is going into one spot. I'm not gonna lose communication from anybody. And if I'm like, oh, what did John say you know, last week? What do we agree on about this makeup work? And I can go back to your thread and everything is there. So it keeps things nice and neat. I get hundreds of emails a day. It's hard to then kind of wade through all those emails from students and non-students and try to find the one student I need. So Remind keeps everything nice and tidy in the same place. Plus, if you're an online student, I can send you voice memos so that sometimes when we read something, we don't get it. But if someone says the same things that are written down with the intonation, we can kind of convey additional meaning. So sometimes it helps you all out too. You also should be able to will use now or learn to use Google Slides, both adding, deleting, editing slides, resizing images and text, all that jazz. If you're not familiar, shoot me a message on Remind. I'm happy to help you with any of these skills that you don't have technology-wise. You should also know how to download images, assess licensing agreements, and cite image sources to avoid legal and plagiarism issues. You can't just pull any image you want off of Google Images. It doesn't work that way in the real world, and you can get fined big money for doing that. So I recommend using Pexels. The link for that is on your Google document. Everything there is free for personal and commercial use. You should also know how to cite things through APA. If you don't know how to cite it on EAPA, you should know how to do it in, you know, for journal articles, websites, images, graphs, data, statistics, everything, both verbally as well as at the bottom of a Google document. You're gonna need to get very, very fluent with that. There's tons of websites out there where you can just plug in your information and it gives it to you. Those are typically going to work for our situation here. If you don't know, shoot me a message on Remind. You also need to check weekly on Canvas two to three times a week just to say abreast of what's going on, of assignments, of what's coming up next week, and I always encourage you to look ahead. Then we have some planning expectations. 
we expect you to have a calendar and planning system that works for you. If you're a paper planner kind of person, great, a paper planner. If you are a digital planner system like I am, Google, uh, Google Calendar, then you need to have a Google uh, Calendar system. All I'm looking from you is for something that works for you because keeping it in your brain doesn't work guarantee you're going to miss things. So I expect you to have a calendar system that doesn't rely solely on Canvas, meaning that you're not like, oh, I'm just going to track my due dates just in Canvas. I'll just log into Canvas and I'll see what's due then. That doesn't work because if you're not logged into Canvas, you're not going to see it. So I want a paper planner or I want a digital planner of some sort that works for you. You are going to have to give that to me within the first two weeks of class, roughly. If you're on a shorter term, it might be the first week. I will send an announcement through Remind on when that due date is, or I'll announce it in class as well if you're face-to-face -face with me. So you need to be on the lookout for that particular information in order to fill out that at the bottom of your little self-checks. If you're using a Google Calendar, you should sync your notifications to your phone. So my phone goes off throughout the day, 10 minutes, 30 minutes until this. It keeps me abreast of what's going on. So like five minutes before something is due, I'm not like, oh crap, five minutes, it was due, that type of deal. So all due dates need to be inputted into your calendar system. Listen for remind or in class when I say that date is because you need to prove to me that you put all the dates that are at the bottom of your syllabus, click syllabus on your canvas. There's a bunch of due dates for every single assignment. You need to have them all written into your calendar and you're gonna take a photo and upload it for me um, at a later point in the class to make sure that you are on track and at least informed and know what's coming up. Aside from that, we also have some communication expectations. You need to communicate early and often. So each instructor is gonna have their own preferred method of communication. You guys know minds are mind. If you're not in my class, you need to check with your instructor on what that is. If you are late to class, you need to send me, and there's little blanks here, so you'll be needing to fill this out. If you are late to class, you need to send me a message through Remind by the end of class. I don't want you texting necessarily while you're driving. But by the time you get to class, I want a explanation through my phone of why you were late. There is attendance points in this class if you're face to face, so that kind of matters to me. And you will not get your attendance points if it becomes a recurring issue. I kind of take attendance usually in the first five minutes of class. If you're later than that, I need to have something to remind. So 